you've added an in-game time system to your game, but now you also want to show that the time changes in your game world. And what a better way of doing this than to add a day and night cycle. This is what this tutorial will be about. To use this tutorial, you need to already have some sort of time system in place that keeps track of what time it is in your game. You can create your own, or follow the tutorials I've made on the topic. And now let's get started. To make it look like there's a difference in both the color and the intensity of the light during the day and night in our game, we will have to create something that changes the game's default colors. We can do this in a number of ways. And many of the tutorials you will find on the topic will also have different solutions. In this tutorial, we'll be using a directional light to light up our scene. I like to use this for two reasons. First, it's easy to mix the light color with the colors in our scene without using a shader. And secondly, it's easy to use together with point lights if we want to add some of these at a later point. So let's add a directional light 2D to our world scene and set the blend mode to mix. To understand the difference between the blend modes, you can try to change the color of the light and the blend mode a few times. With the blend mode set to mix, try setting the color first to white and then to black. For our daylight, we'll be using a white light. But I think that black will make our world too dark at night. The light at night usually also looks more correct if you give it a bluish purple tint. Now we need a way to change the color of the light at specific in-game times. So let's add a script to our directional light and add four exported variables at the top. The first two are the colors we want to switch between. A day color and a night color. And then the next two are the time where the day and night starts. For this we can use the date time class we created for our time system earlier. If you made another time system than the one from my tutorials, then you can use whatever method you use in your system to define a time. Right now our date time object has both a clock and a day number, but we won't be using the number of the day here. It might be better to separate these into their own classes, one for the clock and one for the date, and then only use a clock here. You can experiment with this if you like, but in this tutorial we'll just keep it as it is for now. For now, I'm going to set the day to start at five hours, and the night at 22 hours and 30 minutes. Next we need to figure out when to change the color of the light. For this, let's create an enum with the states we have for our day and night system. Right now we just have two states, day and night. And then let's also add a variable that keeps track of what state we're currently in. We also need a new method for updating the light. I'm just calling mine update. The method needs to take a datetime object as input. And then I'll connect the updated signal from our time system with this new update method in our day and night script. 
This will help us synchronize the light with the time in our time system. So, in this new update method, we need to figure out if it's time to change the color of the light or not. First, we need to figure out when the next state starts. Now, we could do this with an if-else statement. So, if the state is day, then the time we need to change is the night time. And otherwise, it's the day time. This works fine, and it's definitely a viable solution. However, I don't really like it. Instead, I will create a dictionary called time map. And for each of the possible states, I then add its start time to the dictionary with the state as the key. Now I can just look up the time using the dictionary. This is something I like. But we also need to know what the next state is for this to work. Again, I really just prefer the cleanliness of these dictionary lookups. So let's add another dictionary called transition map. Again, using the states as keys, we can then define what the next state is. If you want to use if-else statements instead, then this is also totally fine. I think it's just my experience that chooses this solution as default. When we just have two states like now, either solution might seem fine. But imagine adding more states later, dusk and dawn maybe? To me, using dictionaries like this seems to make adding more states later much, much easier. And while we're already creating dictionaries, let's also create a dictionary for the colors, because I just know we're going to need this later as well. Okay, now let's work on the update method a bit more. We can easily get the next state now. And the time to change. Next, we need to figure out the difference between the current time and the time to change state. We currently don't have a method for comparing two date time objects. And well, we also really only need to compare the clock and not the dates. Again, the system might benefit from separating the clock and the date a bit, but I just feel it would be a bit overkill to do this just for this single use case. So for now, I'll just leave it as it is. But Let's go to the datetime class and add a method for comparing two datetime objects. If you made your own time system, then you might have to do the following a bit differently. However, it shouldn't be too complex to change to fit your system. First of all, I'm calling this method diff without days to specify that I'm only comparing the clocks. I want this method to return the difference in seconds. To do this, I first get the difference in hours, then in minutes, and finally in seconds.
This is then what we return. Note that when we compute the difference in minutes, we of course also add the minutes from the hours. And in the same way, we add all the minutes as seconds when we compute the seconds. The most important thing to remember here is that we're only comparing clocks. And that the result can both be positive and negative. If the result is negative, then we know that we compared our time with a time earlier in a day. This is something we'll be using in a minute. Okay, so back in our script for the day and night cycle, we can now get the time difference between the time for the next date and the current time. Mm, I don't think I would want to change the color of the light directly from the day color to the night color or the other way around. Instead, I want some kind of smooth transition between the two. So, let's add two new variables at the top of our script. First, we add an exported variable that defines the transition length in minutes. And then we also add a boolean that keeps track of whether we are in a transition or not. Back in our update method, we can then check if the time difference is more than zero, but less than the transition time translated to seconds. If this is the case, then we want to start the transition. So we set the in transition boolean to true, and afterwards we need to update the transition. So let's create a new method for this that takes the time difference in seconds as input as well as the next state. In our new method, we then first need to compute a ratio of how far into the transition we are. If the ratio is more than 1, then we know that the transition is done and we've reached the next state. So we set state to be next state and set in transition to false. If the ratio isn't 1 yet, then we update the color of the light to be the color of the current state interpolated with the color of the next state. We can create a linear interpolation using the lerp method and use the ratio as the weight. Wow, okay, I know we've worked on a few things now without being able to test anything. But we're almost there, I promise. We just need to make a few changes to our update method. First, let's check if we are already in a transition. If this is the case, then we just update the transition. Else, if the time diff is more than zero and less than the time difference in seconds, then we start the transition. And finally, if neither of these are true, then we just set the color to the color of the current state. This also makes sure that the color is correct to begin with. Okay, so now we can finally test everything. If you followed my time system tutorials, then you should be able to easily change the speed of the in-game time which makes this system way easier to test. Remember, you can also go to the instance of the time system in our world 
and specify what time it is there. You can use these tools to test that your light transitions work as expected. Oh, but now I can see that we forgot something. We need to make sure that the current state is correct from the start. To do this, we first add an exported variable to store a reference to the time system, which we can then assign in the inspector menu. And then we create a ready method in the script for the day and night cycle, where we set the current state based on the current in-game time. But first, we set the current state to be day by default. And then in our new ready method, we need to check if the current state could be night. We do this by comparing the difference between the game time, the start of the day, and the start of the night. If the first is negative, or the other is positive, then we know that it's night, and we can set the current state accordingly. There won't be any member exclusive exercises this week. Instead, I'm going to give it right here for all of you. But my solution will, of course, as always, be available for the Patreon tiers that usually gets access to the project files for my tutorials. You can use this exercise to test if you need to dig deeper into what's going on in our day and night cycle. So, usually the colors are a bit different at dawn and dusk. It's almost like these are their own sections of time during the whole day. Can you add this to your solution yourself? If you're having trouble with this, then don't try to ask for help for this specifically. Instead, try asking for help to understand the different parts of the system we've just made. If you understand how it all works, then the task should be relatively straightforward. This is why this mini exercise is really good to figure out if there are parts of this video you need to dig deeper into. And that was all for this episode. I hope you liked this video, and if you want to see more like this in the future, then remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that. Bye!